located in the City 7 Ward, the St. Bernard Project was built over a few decades beginning in the 1940s. It would have the distinction of being the second largest housing project in the city. The St. Bernard Project, located in downtown New Orleans, a sub-district of Miss City, would consist of boundaries defined by the New Orleans City of Planning and Commission, Harrison Avenue to the north, Paris Avenue to the east, Lafayette Street and Florida Avenue to the south, or Bayou St. John to the west. Like most public housing projects in the NO, the Bernard would be deemed not a very safe project as it would become a battleground for hustlers during the height of the late 80s. The Bernard was once nicknamed Dodge City due to the wild busting back and forth that would occur between rival crews. Throughout the early 2000s, there were 44 crushings and 680 serious acts committed in the St. Bernard. Between 2002 and 2003, the Bernard would have a total of 25 deletions, 13 smashings in 2002, and 12 crushings in 2002. 2003. Many of the residents blamed handled for displacing residents from other housing projects for the rise in deletions. At one point, the St. Bernard Project would go by the nickname the St. Thomas, a spinoff from the St. Thomas and St. Bernard Projects. According to the NOPD, the St. Bernard Projects will record around a dozen deletions per year. The NOPD would attribute the crushings to turf wars. However, the deletions would eventually decline, giving residents hope that peace may soon be a reality for their housing development. Some would speculate that the crime situation situation in the Bernard was beginning to improve due to the crime themselves. According to the NOPD, rival ops were knocking each other off, solving half of the problem. The other half was being dealt with legally by locking them up. When Hurricane Katrina ravaged New Orleans' largest public housing developments in 2005, civic leaders would reinvent the St. Bernard's housing community as the Columbia Park. The Columbia Park revitalization would be one of the largest urban transformation projects to ever take place in the USA. The Bernard, once plagued by crime, failing schools, and overcrowding, would successfully replicate a mixed income housing model pioneered by a community in Atlanta, Georgia. The St. Bernard Housing Community, SBHC, constructed in the 1940s, is New Orleans' longest running public housing community. At its peak, the Bernard would have 13,333 units. By 2005, the building's infrastructure had deteriorated to the point that only 960 units were livable. A racially profiled article posted in the Time Picayune would read that the residents of the St. Bernard were living in tremendous poverty with very low educational achievement. Only two schools in the community were ranked in the lowest percentile of the public school system of New Orleans. There was really no opportunity for children to escape the area through education. It all will become a massive problem in terms of criminal activity. Four years prior to Hurricane Katrina, there were 44 deletions and 680 felonies on the 50 acres of the former St. Bernard footprint. The NOPD will report that it was a very, very dangerous community to live in. In 2017, a man accused of four crushings in New Orleans will quietly plead guilty to reduce charges the day after the grand jury will expand the scope of a sweeping street crew case involving him and five others. Errol Illy Krish will plead guilty to connection with four deletions in early of 2017 after prosecutors reduced the charges against him from second degree to manslaughter. Illy would also accept responsibility for a slew of other charges. Criminal District Judge Karen Herman was sentenced Illy to 30 five years in prison the same day. However, court records did not show whether Illy had agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. Guilty pleas will come the day after the grand jury will charge two more men as suspects in the crushings of Kayla B. Enemy, a mother of five, at the door of her New Orleans East apartment. The new indictment will read that Illy, Vernell Vernt Nelson, and Andre Dre Francis were involved in deleting B. Enemy. The incident will leave a courtyard and the Chateau de Orleans complex littered with dozens of shell casings. Vernt and Dre will be charged with second degree. It is alleged that all three men were trying to smash another man when they deleted the enemy. According to the 17 account indictment that will come out nearly two months after Illy was charged with the crushing, the enemy's relatives will say the target was her ex-boyfriend, Burnt, who was already in custody in connection with a separate armed robbery when the grand jury handed down the new indictment would be charged. Dre will be booked later on the same charges. The deletion of the enemy will come at the end of a spirit of violence that would involve six men working together to car and smash their ops. The first crushing would take place on January 27th when Illy and Edmund Toon Bacchus were accused of busting at three women inside a car in the 7th Ward. The woman's vehicle was found at North Claiborne and Orleans Avenue. Latanya Clark would lose her life, the other two women would survive. Illy would also be accused of smashing brothers Tory and August Riley on St. Rock Street on January the 28th. It was alleged that Illy would then team up with Vernon and Dre to delete the enemy on the morning 
of February the 2nd, the NOPD will report that the crushing spree ended that night after police and federal agents swooped in on a house in the 2300 block of Murray Street to arrest Illy, Cole, and Toon. Inside the crib, investigators will recover two choppers, a glizzy, and two Rugers. Cole will be charged with nine counts in connection with the group's activity. Cole will plead guilty the same day as Illy, receiving a nine-year prison term. Defense attorney Jeffrey Smith will state that Cole and Illy were close friends growing up. Cole, who was raising a family in Arizona before making the mistake of returning to the NO, had played on himself. Bernie Porsche, Creole pronunciation, Bernie Porsche, aka Tank, whom would have ties in both the Magnolia and St. Bernard projects, would pass at the age of 37 after an incident with state police. Officers would allegedly be on patrol looking for stolen vehicles when trying to make a traffic stop in a vehicle they believed to be stolen. As they were stopping the vehicle, one subject would hop out and start busting at them, hitting one of them in the left elbow. During the hunt for suspects, they would come across one of the suspects who would later be identified as Bernie Porsche, aka Tank, near Law and New Orleans Avenue. According to the NOPD, Tank would be seen on dash cam video hitting at officers while fleeing. Upon the officer returning, Tank would fall to the ground. After a brief period of motionless, Tank would then be seen moving his arm, hitting himself in the head. Tank would be hit three times, once to the leg, once to the lung, and one self-inflicted. Due to video evidence, Tank's passing would be classified as with a self-inflicted wound. Detectives would gather early on a Saturday on a blighted into the street and tend to the city's latest deletion. They would find a familiar face. In the 3500 block of Hamburg Street would lay Jarrell Smith, a.k.a. Jigger. He had been crushed. During the past decade, Jigger would elude the NOPD like perhaps no other accused criminal in New Orleans history. I am and again, prosecutors and police would tie him to crushings, lock him up, and prepare a case only for it to fall apart. Due to the witnesses being afraid to come forward, no one, and I mean no one, would testify against Jigger. If they did plan on testifying, they would not make it to court. The NOPD would allege in 2003, Jigger was paid $10,000 to delete James Tapp, a.k.a. Soldier Slim. His alleged accomplice, Stephen Kennedy, a.k.a. SK, will be crushed in Houston, Texas. No witness will come forward on the deletion of Slim. The case would be dropped. That same year, the NOBD would claim that Jigger smashed Spencer Smith Jr. As with previous cases, witnesses wouldn't come forward and the case would be dropped. In 2007, Jigger was locked up for the crushing of 24-year-old Mandel Duplessis. That same year, Jigger would also be locked up on charges for crushing Terry Brock. As with all of the previous cases, no witnesses, no case. The charges would be dropped.